Hello, welcome to Community Connection. I'm your host, Gloria Inlow. The goal of this show has always been to highlight the unique entertainment options that are available in Jefferson City. And there's a lot of things in Jefferson City for people to do, and sometimes you have to look a little bit harder to find them, so we're here to help you out with that. Well, summer is upon us, and one of my favorite things that happens in the summer is Jefferson City's Independence Day celebrations. Uh, the Salute to America Festival comes to downtown Jefferson City, and for two days, there is just nonstop entertainment. There's concerts, there's rides, there's great food, and of course, there are always fireworks. Uh, but we have a big group here with us today to talk to us about the Salute to America festivities. With us is Mayor Eric Strump. Gloria, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming by, Mr. Mayor. I'm glad to be here. And you also have a unique uh, position. You're the Salute to America Foundation Committee Chair. Very proud to be there. All right. And then we also have Jane Dunkman, and you are the Festival Chair. That's correct. That's correct. And we have uh, Carrie Riley from the new Riley Buick GMC. And I understand you're an entertainment sponsor this year. Yes, we are. Thank you. All right. And then we have Jason Gerling from Midwest Block and Brick. And mm -hmm. Jason, you're also helping sponsor some of the entertainment options. Proud to share the duties with uh, the Riley organization. Okay. And of course, Hal James from uh, Missouri Credit Union, you are here. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? We get to blow things up. It's a wonderful <laughs> opportunity. It's one of the coolest shows in central Missouri. It really is a great opportunity. Well, I appreciate you being here. You can't have the 4th of July without fireworks, and you can't have the festival, the kind of festival that we get to have without the hard work of everyone involved. Now, Jane, I've been going to the festival for years. I've lived in Jefferson City almost all my life, and it's a blast. But for maybe some of the people who haven't had a chance to experience this, can you tell us a little bit about what everyone can expect? Well, of course, you mentioned the entertainment, which we'll cover that more later. But this year, we have some neat new stuff and one is the United FMX Extreme Sports. It'll be on High Street and there are motor, motocross bikes that they do stunts. There's also skateboard stunts that they'll be doing uh, on High Street. Incredible. Something we've also brought, brought back this year is High Street Heroes. Kids, what kid doesn't love a fire truck? We'll have fire trucks, we'll have some of the other service vehicles and some of our local heroes of course that'll be there to talk to the kids. We'll have the carnival, of course, um, the kid zone. Uh, they'll also be there. Tons of things for kids to do without cost, and that's the beauty of this event. So many things to do at no cost. And right. well, you, mentioned, really important. you mentioned High Street Heroes, yeah. and I have to say my three-year-old daughter loves that. Every time she sees a fire truck, she just goes bananas about that. So yeah. that's one of the, her favorite things. And of course, like you said, you have the carnival, so that's there's right. rides available. Um, do you guys try to work to make sure that there's something for every age group at this kind of festival? Absolutely. Absolutely. When you can go with your family, that's always an enjoyable time. Uh, Jefferson City has been doing this for 10 years now, and I don't think I've ever gone a year where there wasn't something for everyone to do. Uh, just a, everything imaginable for the kids and for adults as well. Well, Eric, um, like I said, I try to go to this every year, and there's always, it always seems like there's a huge crowd downtown. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the kind of numbers that uh, this festival sees? You know, in years past, we've had anywhere between uh, 30 and 50,000 people wow. uh, attend this event. And I think, you know, with the surrounding communities and obviously us being the state capital, uh, we draw, you know, a great distance even from the lake and, and, and their great draw that they have down there. But uh, it's, it's, it's a great feeling to have that many people right here in the capital city. Right. Um, you know, we do this show every year, and last year Mayor John Landwehr was here, and he talked a little bit about how he felt that there are so many people that come in from outside Jefferson City that he really feels like he's kind of just an ambassador for the city. Mm -hmm. You know, he's making sure to make sure everyone goes away with a good impression of Jefferson City. Uh, do you think that's something that's going to be accomplished again this year? I think definitely. I, I think, as she just said, I, I think this, this uh, festival really... Uh, kind of goes out to every age group and every demographic and I think whether you're bringing your grandparents or your children uh, everyone has a good time. All right well Carrie um, you know obviously 
downtown's pretty much closed down for this festival. It seems like there's something no matter which way you turn, no matter which street you go downtown, go down. But of course, there's always the main stage, and there's always a lot of great entertainment there. Can you tell us some of the things people can look forward to? Well, uh, you know, this year, like several years in the past, I don't know how many years we've done it, Jason, but uh, Midwest Block and Riley Chevrolet, which is now Riley Chevrolet, Buick GMC Cadillac, uh, have sponsored, been fortunate to sponsor for several years. It's mm -hmm. uh, really been a great event. Um, in fact, they started doing it in 2002, and uh, I guess they moved it the next year to the, uh, they started it on the north side of the Capitol. And then they decided that it was so popular, moved it to the south side so more people can enjoy it in you know, a larger area. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one of the big things that's always a draw is the concerts. There's always a lot of music. And uh, can you tell our audience, it's going to be the first time a lot of them hear about it, but who's coming to, uh, to play for the crowds? Mm. Well, uh, go ahead, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> um, this year, we're absolutely happy to have back uh, the Little River Band. Um, they were here in 2002. Um, when the concert was on the north side. So um, we get to have them back. Um, Little River Band's been around uh, since 1975 and um, a lot of hits along the way. And uh, we're happy to see them uh, come back to this area and get uh, hopefully a taste of what we've improved on since uh, they were here the last time. Oh, great. Uh, anything else happening on the main stage that we should uh, really keep our eyes open for? Well, the evening event, uh, or actually it's, uh, they have three shows. Uh, three, five, and seven is uh, the Eagle event. Uh, it's called, uh, it's, it's, I'm sorry. But live Eagle Show. I yeah, live, live Eagle, Eagle Show. show. Yeah. I'm trying to think it's brought by Missouri American Water. Okay. There it is, yeah. Live uh, Eagle Show. Yeah. That's it. I don't it. know if you guys have <laughs> yeah. seen it before, but it's really, really cool. They, uh, they'll let the Eagle fly and really close to you. They have uh, several, I don't know how many, but other birds of prey like owls and they'll, they'll whiz right by you. It's, it's really, impressive. really impressive yeah, performance. Right. Well, and I also wanted to talk about uh, the fact that this is, this is a two-day event. You guys don't just wait for the 4th of July. You really kind of get the whole weekend to, to get into the spirit of things and celebrate things. So, Jane, uh, is there any one day when people just have to be there? Well, obviously the 4th of July, I mean, that day is when we have the extreme sports. Uh, Carnival Land, of course, is open on the 3rd and the 4th. Uh, Heritage Village, which is sponsored this year by uh, Missouri River, River Region Library and J.C. Parks and Rec. They typically have um, Civil War reenactors, and there'll be all kinds of things that are will be family-oriented in that area this year. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Food Court, who doesn't like food? food and beverages, fun beverages from cold, frosty drinks, and of course there's a beer garden uh, mm -hmm. for the older adults, of course. Um, and then the kids zone, things for kids to do, face painting and all kinds of things like that. Pit Row uh, will have, I believe, a new uh, NASCAR, it's a Mizzou car, which will be really neat. We'll have that next week, or actually for the introduction the kickoff to the 4th of July. So we've got some neat stuff right on High Street on Pitt Row. Uh, we just got a new sponsor for that, GFI Digital will be involved. Uh, Reed Millard brings down cars. Uh, lots of things, lots of things to do. Well, one thing I was going to ask, and, and you can answer this or Eric can answer this, but why, why have it in downtown Jefferson City? What's so unique about that location? Well, obviously that, once upon a time, that was the hub, and it, it is a historical, nostalgic area, and the Capitol's there, and just to have the Capitol grounds and that be the focus, which it is for our state and it is for our community, and it's important that we bring people, you know, to the Capitol and the areas downtown because there is so much rich history in the downtown area. I think also from downtown, too, from that vantage point, people are, are able to watch from, like, the Norin Access and and, 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 and north of our capital city. Uh, but, but, as, but as she just said, you know, the, the way the fireworks look when you're uh, looking at that capital is really something to see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's several people around town that have taken some excellent uh, pictures of, of those, you know, in slow motion and, and still photos. And, and I'm very much an amateur photographer, but uh, it, it's, it's really neat to see. Well, fireworks really are just kind of an ingrained part of the 4th of July all across the country and how I understand that this is actually not the first year that uh, Missouri Credit Union's been involved in uh, the fireworks show. 
No, we're real fortunate to uh, and, and pleased to be able to to follow up with the main stage work that uh, Carrie and Jason do. That I mean, the shows are wonderful, and then to have have the opportunity to see the fireworks, uh, as Eric said, the, the background is just uh, just phenomenal. There, this is a unique thing. There's we've all been to a lot of uh, different shows in our lives, and and. Uh, what we've been able to put together here is is really something that doesn't exist very many places, and it's it's just a wonderful place. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful time. The weather is always perfect. It never rains until it's over. It, that's the worst. That's the worst it's happened, I believe, so far. So is that a guarantee? I'm, and I, and yeah. I'm sure that'll continue. I don't know why it would, but uh, uh, the Missouri Credit Union just wonderfully pleased to be able to be part of this again. Uh, it's a it's a great opportunity and I really do like to watch it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> How would you say it compares to some of the other shows that you might see in other parts of the state or other parts of the country even? Well, it's as big as any show that's out there. And one of the things that we were able to do, uh, uh, I believe that was even up to three years ago, I guess we're gonna have to work on that again pretty soon, but we were able to work a deal. And we got a large amount of uh, fireworks show and display and different things. And, and it, you can tell it, I mean, it's a, it is a big show, and some of those mortars that they're using over there, I went over there and saw what they put in it. <laughs> There's some big stuff they're shooting <laughs> up in the air, uh, and it's, it's a really good show. It, uh, it's, it's a class show. Uh, uh, they you know, were able to, to co-broadcast um, uh, with uh, 104 and, and watch the, uh, or have the, you know, the music with it, and right. that helps out really, you know, just makes it for a real nice evening at the end of the day. It's a, it's a wonderful way to end the day, and fourth is always a, a wonderful day anyway. It's a lot to remember, and there's a lot of reason that we need to continue to celebrate it. Yeah. That's right. And I think it's important to stress that you should go out and see that show and leave the fireworks to the professionals, because they know what they're doing, and they're safe, <laughs> and they're pretty awesome, pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, how, I mean, obviously this is a big commitment on, on your bank's part, and I mean, why do you feel the need to, to sponsor events like this? Well, it's, a, it, it's probably in this particular one, it, as I, I guess I tried to, to say, it, it is a unique thing. There, there's just not very many communities where, you know, 30, 40, sometimes 50,000 people come together and everybody's a friend. It, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a unique thing. And uh, uh, just to keep that alive is, a, is worth a lot, but to be able to do it uh, here in this uh, community, right here uh, with the Capitals backdrop, uh, there's a lot of resources. There's a lot of people. This is, we are a very small representation of what helps put this together. This is a this is a big group. Uh, uh, Miss Snodgrass has done a wonderful job herding all of us into the right position, and uh, it's it's a, just a, a something that uh, I don't think any of us want to see pass. Some things must pass, but uh, this is one thing that we can hold on to. Oh, well, to talk a little bit about this, Jason, and maybe expand upon that, Midwest Block and Brick's been doing this for a long time, too, sponsoring these types of events. And, and, and what's your company's position on why that's important? Um, we're actually really happy to sponsor. We're happy that uh, Riley teams up with us to, to um, get it all done. Um, but basically, we, being in the construction industry, we feel like that uh, we're here to help build the community, but a part of that is maintaining it. So um, events like this is um, something that... Uh, keeps everybody together and keeps everybody entertained and happy with the community they live in, so we're happy to be a part of it. Well, and Carrie, I know that Riley, too, has been there right with Midwest Block and Brick a long time, and what are your feelings well, on that? Well, it's just a great opportunity for us. Uh, this year, we're fortunate enough to celebrate our 75th year of business in Jefferson City and uh, being the state capital. Just like you said, it's, it's just so beautiful, and it's, uh, it's just an event that, that everyone wants to be a part of. Well, and Eric, maybe you could expand upon that. I mean, we've got three great sponsors here, but, I mean, the list is actually quite a bit longer than that. You know, uh, obviously the uh, um, Missouri Credit Union, we definitely appreciate everything you bring to the, to the fireworks show and, and, of course, Riley's and Midwest Block for the concerts. And we have some other major sponsors, too, and those are Central Bank, uh, Hawthorne Bank, and uh, Not Not. And above and beyond that, it also takes a, a lot of manpower behind those sponsorships. Uh, our, our city staff uh, obviously works very hard uh, towards these events, and especially this one. Uh, anytime you get uh, 30 to 50,000 people in one group, it takes a lot of people to kind of herd those together, so to speak. Uh, the County of Cole is obviously a big sponsor of this event. We want to always thank the, uh, the commission and, and all their people for doing that. Uh, State of Missouri. Uh, OA, they're always very uh, cooperative as far as letting us use the uh, the capital lawn, and it's obviously the state's capital lawn 
but uh, they're very good to work with. And they're again our, our very own Parks and Rec Department. I think they probably carry the, the majority of the load for our, for our city staff. And there's a lot of other organizations, obviously, that make this possible. But you know, any, any time in a city like this, uh, we have a can-do attitude and people jump in and get it done. With events like this, is it something that where it's kind of, you know, it's hard, it's a lot of work to go out and find people that are willing to help out with this and, and to sponsor events? Or do you find that everyone just kind of jumps at the chance for this unique festival? I think, I think most people uh, will jump at the chance. I mean, there's, there's roughly over 100 volunteers that help out with this event. And they only, they only do it once, but I think as, uh, as uh, uh, the co-chair here will agree, uh, once they're in, they're, they're not in for life, but they, they definitely enjoy it and they, they look forward to the experience yeah. again. That's right, and I'd like to interject. We have many other organizations, Coca-Cola, they get involved. Um, uh, St. Mary's, the Kids Zone, they take care of that. I work at Jefferson Bank and we're happy to sponsor the uh, High Street Heroes this year. Um, as I mentioned before, J.C. Parks and Rec and uh, Missouri River Region Library are actually taking over an area. And then, of course, Carol Rima Motors. They host the um, or sponsor the Classic Cars area, Route 66, which is down around um, St. Peter's Church. So it goes from St. Peter's Church all the way down to Madison Street, and we've now expanded uh, in front of the courthouse area with the extreme sports. Mm -hmm. So there, yeah, we've got a lot of incredible people that volunteer. I was pulled in last year after having served on some of the subcommittees and just the people that step up, the organizations that step up and volunteer, it's incredible and I feel like I work hard at it but I don't work any harder than everybody else. There's just so many hands and so many people that get involved. It makes this volunteer experience very, very gratifying and rewarding for each and every one of us. Well, and too, I just want to point out, you know, that when you when you go downtown for this, no matter what day it seems that you're there, I, you know, I usually try to go both days. I mean, there's there's huge crowds there, but mm -hmm. it's not it's not uncomfortable. It's not doesn't seem crowded, and sometimes you know when you get in big crowds like that, it can just be overbearing. And there's too many people, and people get irritated. And it just seems like there's a great atmosphere yeah. downtown. It's a festival, so yeah. it feels great. Right. Yeah, and it's spread out enough that I don't think any one area is congested. Um, there's plenty of other things to see, as I mentioned, the food, the beverages, the, from root beer to snow cones to cotton candy to corn dogs. There's, everything is there. I think a neat thing, too, is that uh, when you talk to different family members throughout the weekend, it's normally like, hey, have you been uptown yet? Or it's like, yeah. no, we're going at so-and-so <laughs> yeah. and we'll, we'll meet you here or meet you there. I mean, it's not just... Uh, your own family, but your extended family that does that uh, along, with, along with your friends and employees and, and that kind of deal. I mean, it's a true festival. I don't want to forget about the Little Mr. and Miss um, pageant oh, yes. that, is, that takes place, Little Mr. and Miss Independence, I think, and that's on the 3rd. And of course, there's the parade. There are so many things that will take place, but R Missouri River Region, uh, no, River Region Credit Union, I'm sorry, sponsors the Little Mr. and Miss Independence, and they will be downtown and ready to crown the new king and queen. <laughs> That's always a cute event and we Very actually cute. we usually run that on JCTV too after the fact and yeah. it's always a great thrill to see the, the young Jefferson City residents getting getting involved, involved. in that. Too. So uh, Carrie, is there anything that you would like to just really stress for the viewers at home about what they can expect or, or what you hope they take away from this experience? Well, of course, what they're going to take away is a great experience to anybody that's been there before. But I, what I did want to remind people is that there, there is other entertainment. Uh, in fact, the, our Riley Chevrolet Toyota Science Store is uh, sponsoring the, some, some events, some performances throughout the, the uh, festival area. And uh, one of the local performers is going to be a band, Man in the Ring. Uh, five-piece band supposed to be really a fantastic, or is a really fantastic, play, uh, has, and apparently has a, uh, a folk violin mix that is supposed to be fantastic. Uh, so there's a lot of other entertainment for people to enjoy, not just the main stage. Mm -hmm. Well, and Jane, one of the things you, you briefly touched on when we started uh, talking was a lot of this is absolutely free. You can come mm -hmm. downtown and have a great time and not, not spend a dime. Is that something that was really important when you were putting this all together to make that's, sure it was a highlight. I think that's why we're all here. We want to make it free. That's why each one of the organizations have stepped up. I want to mention CenturyLink. They actually sponsor the parade. What parade's not fun for every kid and those, it, it kicks off the event and 
it's important that it's free. And when it's not free anymore, I don't know, it's probably not going to have that same feeling for each of us that get involved. But the organizations step up for that reason because they want to make this a free, enjoyable event for families of the Jefferson City area. Mm -hmm. Well, and Eric, we talked a little bit about the fact that people come in from outside the city. You know, obviously, uh, gas prices are getting high, and, uh, you know, e everyone's trying to save some money and, and kind of just think economically. But do you think that's going to impact the size of the crowds this year at all? I would really expect the, the crowds to be even larger than normal because of gas prices and I think because of the, the excellent entertainment that we have. Uh, we've had good entertainment, obviously, in the past, but... Uh, Little, uh, Little River Band's a great band, and they have a lot of hits, and, and uh, I, think, um, I think it's going to be a very big, big year. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Jason, we talked a little bit about, you know, what Midwest Block and Brick does along with Riley and a little bit about why Midwest Block and Brick has been doing this for so many years. Um, have you had the chance to kind of experience the festival at all or, or talk with people who attend and kind of get a feel for what the crowd's thinking and taking away from this event? Definitely. It's uh, like uh, somebody said earlier, it's always, I think as Eric said, you know, it's always, when you're talking to family and friends, it's always, have you been or are you going or what time will you be there? Um, it's a great atmosphere. Um, my kids definitely love it, you know, the carnival type atmosphere. And then uh, most of the time watching the fireworks and watching the entertainment come through, it's, uh, it's a great, almost relaxing kind of into a long weekend. So it's, um, it's a lot of fun and I, I, I don't think anybody would be disappointed if they came down. So. Well, Hal, um, as the sponsor of the fireworks show, a lot of people, you know, they try to go on the Capitol lawn to catch that, and that's obviously a great place to be. But um, is there an advantage to having this downtown where people can kind of go in several different places and be able to see a, a good show, have a good well, view? Well, the, the, again, it's large. You can see it from a, a, a lot of different vantage points, and a lot of people get here uh, early and stake out their, their place where they want to put their blanket and, and uh, have their cooler and, and uh, get started. But uh, you can see it from just about anywhere. It's, it's a big show, and uh, uh, there's not a problem to, to, to find a place to see it. It, it really, uh, that's, again, the reason why it's, it's right here next to the river. There's, there's so many places to get to uh, all along here that, uh, that we can uh, view, the, view the event. So it's, a, it's just, it works out real well. Well, and obviously, um, kind of the, the gateway that greets a lot of people as they come into Jefferson City is the bridge. But I think it's important to stress we don't want to create any undue hassle or traffic for anyone that's trying to get in or, or out of the area. So steer clear of, of uh, parking on the bridge An there. Another thing, another thing too, uh, just to make a clarification to people that, that might think they could, uh, the new pedestrian uh, bridge, uh, MoDOT, will actually have that closed. Oh, okay. uh, during those festivities uh, as, 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 a, as a safety recommendation. So, Because okay. yeah. it's important that when you have a crowd that size to make sure everyone sure. has a safe time. And, 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 it's, fun and time. it's important that they know ahead of time yeah. as opposed yeah. to just that night. <laughs> to, to hike up there and it's closed. Yeah, yes. yeah right. Yes. Well, it sounds like there is a lot of great stuff going on. Uh, two days of it. Uh, you can do something different every day, I think, and, and maybe not catch all of it. Uh, but Jane, if someone's really wanting to focus on something and find out what's going on, is there somewhere they can go to find out more information or, or maybe get involved? Yes, there's actually a Facebook page that's out there. It's salutetoamerica.org mm -hmm. is the um, website. And so, yeah, plenty of places to get information. It'll be in the newspaper soon. Um, with, with a schedule. The schedule is out on salutetoamerica.org and there's lots of information on the Facebook page as well. All right. Um, well, Eric, as uh, not only someone who's been very involved in the festival and bringing this to Jefferson City, but also as kind of the new, uh, new mayor and the first year that you're having Fourth of July in this post, is there anything that you'd really like our viewers to, to know or think about as they're getting ready for this event? Well, I, I think, uh, first of all, I think keeping our sponsors in mind because obviously without, without uh, the sponsorships that we have, uh, this event would not happen. Uh, these events are not uh, inexpensive to put on. Uh, the bands and stages and lights and sounds and obviously the fireworks just by themselves are, are extremely expensive. So I think keeping those sponsorships, uh, th those companies in mind as you're going out to making, uh, as, as you go out and make purchases, and I would like to uh, in invite the whole city to kind of stay in town uh, July 4th weekend and, and be a part of this, uh, this festival and our festival, not our festival district, but the festival as a whole. Uh, it's, it's your hometown and what a better place to be. Right. And I think it's also a really 
great opportunity for people in Jefferson City to show the rest of the state and all the people that are coming in what it is that makes Jefferson City such a great community, True. a great place to live. And like I said, there's never a, it's never a negative environment, negative atmosphere when you're up there. Everyone's very friendly, very cordial. You run into people, you, you meet, like we had said earlier, your extended family, and, and uh, I think it's just a really welcoming environment. So I'd like to thank all of you for all the work that you do in putting the show together and also for coming on and talking with our viewers today about uh, what's going to be happening. Uh, Jane, just a quick review. Can you tell us when things start and uh, when, pe when uh, the activities downtown will really begin? Um, they kick off on the 3rd, and I don't have the exact schedule, so I'm going to steer everybody to the salute to America.org uh, page for the specific times. Uh, some of the things aren't all ironed out. We don't want to direct anybody just yet from this show uh, downtown, mm -hmm. but all that information is on salutetoamerica.org and also information on the Facebook page. Okay. And it sounds like there will be stuff pretty much all day, though, and, and into the night, something to do down that there. That is correct, yes. Okay. Well, great. Thank you all so much for coming by today. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see all of you down there. And to our viewers at home, I'd really like to thank you for tuning in today and watching this. Uh, the Salute to America Festival is just a really fun and exciting event. It's something that I try to go to every year, and uh, there is something for everyone. And you can go down there and have a great time and celebrate Independence Day without spending a lot of cash, and that's always something that's really valuable. So thank you so much for watching, and make sure you stay tuned for more great JCTV programming. Good night. Thank you.